And today I am going to chat with my friend, Dark Zero of Zero Linux. He's the maintainer of Zero Linux. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? I can't complain. It's It's been an interesting week for me. Uh, had some weather events I had to deal with, some power outages I had to deal with. But other than that, pretty good. I, I, I've got my health. and This is the most important part. It really is. Yeah. So uh, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Zero Linux because it's becoming a, a pretty popular Linux distribution, I would say. I, I've seen, even before I made my video about it a few weeks back, people were asking me about it. And that's always a sign that there's general interest in something. When I start hearing about something on a regular basis, that tells me, hey, I need to check this out. And I was glad I did because I was really impressed by what I saw. So uh, you want to take a second to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Well, yeah, why not? Uh, I'm Z Dark Zero. Uh, I'm from Lebanon. And Zero Linux is one of the few, if not the only, uh, a custom Linux distro coming out of these lands, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, it started off as a hobby, just like every distro does. But then I thought, why not share it with people that might share my vision? Yeah. And uh, kept working on it. Uh, and I made a lot of friends, like yourself and many others in the YouTube sphere. Uh, and it's kept on growing and growing and growing and growing. And now uh, it has reached a point I'm getting 30,000 plus downloads a month. Very and cool. I never thought it would reach that, it's specifically for a hobbyist distro that's not meant to be right. for the masses. You know, you cannot satisfy everyone. And when you build something for yourself uh, and then you share it online, people start expecting things from you. So well, when you I, say you started it as a uh, as a hobby, was it just purely your idea or were you pushed into it by other folks or was it just you one day decided, hey, I'm going to try this? Well, good question. Uh, simply, it was out of frustration because I couldn't find a distro for myself that satisfied my own needs. And. I've heard Thank that you. before from other distro maintainers, by the way, <laughs> the exact yeah, same I thing. Know. I, <laughs> figures, because uh, uh, necessity is the mother of all creations. Mm -hmm. I believe in that saying. And I must thank Eric Dubois from uh, Arco Linux. Yeah, he's create, awesome. Uh, for creating ALCI, because without ALCI, Zero Linux wouldn't have existed. Basically, uh, it was a simple script. You just run it in... in uh, in the terminal and it will build you an arch a custom arch iso and then it's puzzle pieces as he puts it lego blocks i just remove his stuff boot my my mm -hmm. packages and and it grew from there well, and that's a great I, thing about linux is uh the modularity i mean you can take stuff away add stuff yeah you can mix multiple desktop right. environments together and stuff mm -hmm. like that but i fell in love where all that began is me falling in love with kde Okay. And uh, some people will hate me for this, but the <laughs> distro that made me fall in love with KDE is Manjaro. I don't think anybody would hate you for that because that might be the nicest KDE desktop people yeah. had seen when Manjaro bursted on the scenes. I mean, that was really like, wow, that looks a lot better than a lot of the other KDE distros at the time. They were very clean. Uh, yeah. Their their implementation is very clean. But I come from an artistic background. Mm -hmm. My mom was an actress. My uh, God rest her soul. My uncle, God rest his soul, was a famous painter uh, across Europe. He was so famous all over Europe. My dad is a director. I was into cinema. Uh, I'm visually... Uh, I'm a visual person, basically. So I needed to create a distro using a desktop environment that allowed me to get my uh, artistic point of view across. So KDE was the only one. I tried GNOME extensions break with every update. Yeah. No way. And with all the limitations, it's like uh, putting uh, gluing my feet to, to the floor and telling me, run the marathon. <laughs> Not going to happen. Uh, so KDE was the only one. And 
it, it, this is where I continued going. And the, what the people love about Zero Linux is not uh, the default rice only, is the fact that I offer them the choice. I am, uh, like you, who, uh, a firm uh, believer in freedom, freedom of choice. I don't like to bound people by all my decisions. Right. So I was like, okay, if you want to, for example, even in the driver section, I offered them the choice between Pipewire and Pulse. I don't force them with either. I give them the choice uh, with every single application in Calamares. Now, I, I will be adding an option in the next release coming May 25th on the, on the first year anniversary of the distro. I will be giving them an option to install to select which rice they want. Maybe they don't like the default rice. Maybe they prefer something else. I have right. five rices in the uh, that, that have been done. They can select whichever one they prefer. Now that is that's very nice because I, I don't know of any other distribution off the top of my head that during the installation process lets you select like theming options. Well, I usually they they give you their their vision of a desktop, but it's just the one vision, but you're going to offer five, several. But, yeah, five, but that's post install, not during installation. Oh, it's not so, during the installation. Yeah, yeah it's post installed in my tool. Okay. There's, there's a something called a rice switcher. They can switch their rice, but it's preferable they do it as soon as they log in uh, on first log on, basically, because it's going to replace a lot of settings and stuff. If they set up the, the desktop the way they want and then then they yeah. try to switch. It's going to undo everything they did and replace it with the new stuff. But with everything there's uh, with everything good, there are small drawbacks. Of course, I had to I had to weigh both. And and during those three months that I took off from releasing anything, it's a lot of decisions more than creating. And by be, by being a maintainer, a distro maintainer, it's 90 percent decision making, only 10 percent work. Right. So it's more more about the vision, you yes. know, coming up with it was more about, yeah, like a roadmap than actually doing the work itself. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you have since uh, it became so famous. Now it's no longer about myself. Mm -hmm. I have to think of others without breaking the vision. Right. So uh, the way you do that, I discovered is you keep it yours. Like uh, Zero Linux is not a gaming centric distro. You can game on it, but it's not what it's about. I offer the installation of different game launchers, but I don't optimize the distro for gaming. It's right. up to them to figure the users figure. I give them a base. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was actually going to ask you about the gaming because the fact that it does come with so much stuff that would make the user assume, hey, this is a, a gamer's distro. Yes, uh, I had. This is part of the decisions I had to make. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't game on Linux. I don't believe on uh, in gaming on Linux. I will never believe in gaming on Linux because to me, gaming on Linux, you're relying on an on a on another layer, right? Called Wine. It's not. A, it's not a. It's not an emulator. I know it's in the acronym, mm -hmm. but just re uh, the fact that I have to rely on something underneath the game. Mm -hmm. Makes me uncomfortable. Now, we're going to get slightly off of Zero Linux for just a second and just personal opinions about uh, gaming on Linux. What are your thoughts about the Steam Deck obviously being based on Arch Linux, the same that Zero Linux is? Do you think that will have any impact on like the broader Linux ecosystem? The fact that now you're going to have many, many more, hopefully many more companies interested in making gaming a thing on Linux. I am split in two halves on this. Uh, my view is split in two. Uh, on one hand, this is very, I see it as a very positive point. This will uh, uh, increase the adoption of Linux. Because yeah. people are getting uh, gonna start getting introduced to Linux through the Steam Deck. Now I know there are some people who hate Linux, Linux haters who are going to try to install Windows, and I'm not talking about don't. these people. <laughs> if they buy a, a four, five hundred, six hundred dollar device, depending on what model you get, and you wipe the the OS that ships with it off of it. You're an idiot. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> like You don't buy an expensive device and then wipe 
the OS that comes with it off of it and install Windows. That's crazy. You must you must, you must admit not everybody is uh, a Linux uh, aficionado. Yeah. So, uh, but still, the reason that uh, that Linux doesn't have adoption, the the barrier to entry for most people is they don't want to install an operating system. It's going to be the same thing with that device. No one's going to want to wipe out the OS and install something different on their Steam Deck. Nerds will. People like you and me would. Yeah. But normal people, no. The, on the other hand, for me personally, this is my mm -hmm. personal opinion. Uh, since I just sort of said earlier that I don't like to rely on another layer to, to run my games, I don't see the Steam Deck as a AAA gaming device. I see the Steam Deck as a wonderful emulation device. Okay. Because I'll be able to play PS3 games on that thing, which, uh, which on my Raspberry Pi I cannot, because of the uh, the emulators that we have on Linux for various, yeah, especially retro gaming. I, I think that makes that device interesting. Uh, at some at one point, I had uh, ninety thousand ROMs on my uh, of various uh, systems on my <laughs> oh. Raspberry Pi. I had a four terabyte drive on there and I was enjoying it, but I couldn't play anything past, I think the PS2. Mm. The PS2 was, and even the PS2, I couldn't play all the games, but it was very limiting. So with the Steam Deck, uh, I, see, I see myself buying this thing just for the emulation aspect. Right. But as far as the Linux aspect of it, I see it increasing the adoption of uh, Linux, especially that the OS was built on an immutable file system. Yeah. People who are not pre uh, who don't understand Linux too much, uh, they're not going to unlock the system to mess with it and whatever. They're just going to use it uh, as a browsing thing on the go, but it's not meant for that. People think that Valve created a desktop or a laptop a portable laptop on one side and a gaming device on the other. No, 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 no. The desktop side is to do things that you cannot do from the Steam UI, to add stuff to Steam. It's not meant to be used like, but it can be used for many things. Linux is very flexible, but that's why I love the Steam Deck. Yeah. It came at the right time. And I've always thought that eventually, once Proton becomes even better, it wouldn't shock me if Valve starts offering other Windows software other than games that run on top of Linux. Like the people that complain about things like Microsoft Office and the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. It wouldn't shock me if one day those kinds of programs, those Windows professional programs, worked under Wine and Proton. And you couldn't just buy those through Steam. Yeah. Uh, it can only go up from here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that would be great for, for Linux adoption, just because the, the the last few programs that are really big holdouts that are preventing people from switching then would become available. I'm going to, I'm going to throw a wink mm -hmm. and I'm going to say, who knows, maybe zero Linux on the uh, Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now that we've got that out of the way that zero Linux is not necessarily meant for the gamer, what it's, is zero Linux? Who is it meant for? What's, okay. the, what's the target audience? Okay. It's for the tinkerers. Okay. Uh, simply put, it's for the tinkerers. It's a base OS, a very good looking, might I add, uh, uh, OS that goes with a tagline, uh, uh, an eye candy, uh, uh, what, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> eye candy lovers wet dream is yeah. the tagline on the website yeah yeah an eye candy lovers wet dream yes because i i work on the visual aspect i tweak it to be in a general purpose os this is how uh, this is the idea of zero linux now what you do with it once you get it you can do whatever you want it's linux in the end yeah. i'm not limiting anyone i'm not i don't when i say not a gaming centric distro it just means that I didn't go uh, out of my way to make it to optimize it for gaming. But and you can do it with the right knowledge. You got the Arch Wiki, you got the whole web 
you can just add the necessary stuff uh, that uh, is required to turn it into a gaming centric uh, distro. But uh, uh, the roots of uh, Zero Linux is general purpose distro for the people who enjoy their, uh, a good looking distro yeah. uh, with all the tools required for a day to day use. Simple. It's, it's, it's for the person that wants to, to customize their system, really. It's for the, you know, if you're the kind of person that typically just takes anything, never customizes it, Zero Linux would work for that too. But if you want to get creative yeah. with your desktop, I think. Yeah, that, and for general purpose. So it, you got yeah. all the browsers you need, the video edit. You can, you can use it to do your video editing. And I was told by many users... Uh, one professional user, uh, uh, a person who has been using Linux for decades, I was told that Zero Linux was so well optimized that uh, it's even faster for video editing than any other distro he ever used. No. You know what and editor it, he was using? Uh, I don't, don't remember. I think uh, DaVinci Resolve. Okay. I, so, I, that's what I would have assumed too. But I okay. So I, uh, without even knowing it, I optimize it for, the, for those things. So uh, things become without you even meaning it. So uh, I, I was working on it as a general purpose distro. I used to have Vivaldi. When you checked it out, it had Vivaldi as a default browser, not anymore. Uh, partly because of your video and, uh, and partly because of some users uh, talking about how it's not open source. And I watched your latest not open source. Yeah, I mean, video. distributions... Some of them do ship non-free software out of the box, and it's not a big deal for most people, but you will find you'll find enough of a percentage of the community that it's a big deal for. That's why I mentioned it. Me personally, it's not that big of a deal because again, many distros do that, but I did want I wanted to give you a heads up because I already know there are going to be people that complain about that yeah. decision. Yeah, because thought... you remember Manjaro had the same situation yeah. when they were they removed LibreOffice for a proprietary office suite. And, uh, and, and, and it's like, why, why do that? <laughs> like, that's great if you want to offer it, but maybe don't put that on the ISO. Yeah. I, I reverted that decision and I went the safer route, the neutral mm -hmm. route, neutral route. By neutral, what do I mean? I didn't include Firefox. I didn't yep. include Vivaldi. I didn't include Let them choose. Uh, no, I didn't include any browser that would create opinionated posts. I went mm -hmm. the safe route and I included the Qt or uh, KDE may, uh, may the, uh, Falcon. The KDE Falcon. Yeah, it used to be, uh, what was the name of it before? I forget. <laughs> Conqueror? Yeah, Conqueror. Yeah, Conqueror with a K. Yeah. yeah. Um, and while you were talking a, a few minutes ago, I was actually showing the viewers a little bit of your website. I was giving them a little preview. This is not actually live on the web yet. You say this particular website is going to go live soon. This will be a replacement for the current Zero Linux dot XYZ. Yes, sir. This is a sneak preview or sneak peek at an upcoming web, uh, the upcoming design for the website. This will come on the first year anniversary on May 25th. And it's been it has been designed by a fellow Lebanese web design web developer, and he's doing an amazing job. When I when he showed me the first draft of the website, my mm -hmm. jaw dropped. I had to pick it up. Yeah, I, I mean it, it looks really slick, even though it's kind of flashy. It's also got a minimalist kind of quality to it. Isn't um, Zero Linux flashy? It yeah, goes with the theme. It really does. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you do me a favor and scroll down to the FAQ section, click on the FAQ section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got it. And, and we'll click it, on. Yeah, it, sh it will show question, uh, frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. And those are curated by me uh, through uh, a lot of troubleshooting. I had to pick the right questions and answers. And those will be changing when the new release comes. But... This is where basically they will find all their answers. And if you scroll back up to the home section, and I need to, this is very important you show. This is near and dear to my heart. When you click on disclaimer. Next. Disclaimer. Screen. Yeah. This is very important. I is that the, uh, the major projects announcement? Is that? No, it's under. Oh, the disclaimer. I see it. Yep. Yeah. This is where I clarify what Zero Linux is. This, mm -hmm. this is near and dear to my heart. 
uh, I had to uh, really choose my words carefully, not to upset the, the people. Uh, but I just basically, not to read everything, uh, it basically explains that this was made for me and my, uh, myself alone. And it wasn't meant to support a wide variety of hardware. I can well, I can already, yeah, to, to sum it up, it looks like you're basically saying zero Linux isn't meant to be all things to all people, basically. Yes, sir, you because very you, well. you get a lot of people that think a project has to be everything to everybody. And you're basically stating up front, this is what this is. This is the goal. I don't care about the rest. That's my words, not his words. <laughs> right? Yeah, my words, I was very careful not to say that, yeah. not to say I don't care. It's just that I am one man doing it. Right. It's I'm like, why don't you... Why don't you support, you know, all 50 different desktop environments and window managers that are available in the repos? You know, that's, that's or why don't you support Wayland? Or, you know, why don't you why don't you, you know, all this new technology that springs up overnight, man, you got to support that right away. To answer that question is very simple. <laughs> I include I, I, I give you the freedom to do so. I offer, yeah. so. There are things that I when I feel I can offer something. To answer your your request, instead mm -hmm. of including it by default on the ISO, which I can't, because at, at that point I will I will be requested to support what I include on the ISO by default. Right. But I offer the choice to the user. I tell them, okay, you want, uh, for example, Wayland? Just click a button in my tool; it will install Wayland and enable it for you. But don't expect me to provide support for it. Exactly. At your own, do it at your own risk, kind of thing. And, you know, I, I went a little over the top by summing up you know, <laughs> what you said, but your disclaimer is pretty straight to the point as far as you're only interested in KDE Plasma as a desktop. And if you're packaging things specifically for the zero Linux repos, don't have dependencies that require something that's not a KDE desktop, right? So don't pull in, you know, GTK, uh, yeah. you know, right. I, I, I get that, which makes sense. Like in the end, I mentioned what will not be supported, hack installs, because I uh, I had a lot of requests to, to, to support the dual booting with a Hackintosh. Mm. Uh, uh, cloud server installs. Yeah, but guy, that's, that, that would be so hard to, like, who's going to test all of this stuff? Yeah, you, exactly. you, you would have to have a Hackintosh yourself to just to make sure that stuff works. And well said, well yeah. said. Cloud server installs. A guy came on my server and he was like, can I install it on my uh, Linode? Mm. I'm like, it's a desktop environment. Linode does not does not use it, desktops. It uses yeah. only terminal. <laughs> and other DEs and WMs, we went over that. Custom mm -hmm. other kernels. This is a very big issue. Kernels are a very big issue. When you start I was actually going to, I was going to ask you specifically before you get on this rant, what kernel does Zero Linux ship with? And then... Arch. Default just the standard generic yeah. kernel and but you can install whatever you can install kernel. whatever you want right. but i will not provide support because the kernel is the core of your system if right. you start messing with them and you encounter issues that's your problem if you compile your own kernel and you break something that's that's not yeah, your problem like lts <laughs> even lts yeah. people trust the lts because it's long term service mm -hmm. but the lts on some laptops it causes sleep wake issues the yeah. zen kernel uh, causes the uh, yeah. Linux not found sometimes on some laptops. I cannot provide support for that because I don't use that kernel. Uh, and other people that requ require uh, uh, me to add support for touch devices like the, uh, what's it mm. called, the Surface Book? Stuff. Oh, the tablets. Um, yeah. yeah. This is a, another. Uh, but unless you have that hardware, that's another thing. You can't possibly have all of that hardware yourself to yeah, test exactly. that, you know. That's, That's my point. The, the whole disclaimer basically is yeah. I cannot have the hardware you have to provide support. I can point you to the right direction, but how am I to test this to uh, confirm or deny that this fix uh, works or not? Yeah. So, yeah, this is very important. This disclaimer is very important to me because... Uh, is it, it just a, is strictly, though, is it a limitation of just manpower, just there's not enough people? Uh, limitation of manpower and hardware availability. Right. I'm only al uh, I'm alone doing this, and yeah. to, to explain alone, alone is not is not. Uh, I need people. Mm -hmm. I prefer doing things alone. I'm a one man. Yeah. 
army and i prefer that because if you add people you're going to add more uh, uh variation to the equation so, yeah th typically things will become more complex yeah this yeah. guy wants this this guy wants that I'm a one man show. It will always be a one man show. I will I will accept input from many people. Now I have another Lebanese guy with me in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 100 percent Lebanese distro. I have another kid with me, uh, Gamer King on the server. He's amazing at uh, pointing out issues, giving great ideas, great implementations. All I do is make it happen. He comes up with great ideas. And uh, he's very creative, basically. And uh, the audio switcher, the rice switcher, is, they were all his ideas. I credit mm -hmm. him for the ideas. I oh, just cool. implemented them. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a group effort, but I do everything alone, and I'm the only one who decides what stays and what doesn't. Yeah. And I think that that makes sense, especially early in a project's life. It, yeah. it would be important for you to know everything that's actually going on because if you start relying on too many people especially early yeah yeah you know, i think that would cause you some especially, issues especially when i uh, there was a guy i was in, thinking of uh, adding to the team but unfortunately he was a pro window manager guy and window managers just go over my head i tried them uh, config uh, writing multiple config files and Mm -hmm. It would have taken maybe 10 years to get to what Zero Linux is at today. But uh, the thing with uh, various uh, desktop environments and stuff like that, I, I tried, the first year of, uh, is always the rockiest for every mm -hmm. desktop. We uh, test, we experiment. I experimented with GNOME. I re released GNOME version but it kept on breaking and breaking and breaking. And I had to host a uh, hundred uh, packages on my on my distro just to include on the ISO and whatnot. And I couldn't keep up it, it was, and the limitations and whatnot. It and was there, there was also a XFCE edition as well, because when I first tried uh, your distribution on the website, it offered two different ISOs at the time, or at least the website said it did, but I think you had already taken the XFC ISO down. No, you just I took changed. it after. I took it after yeah. your video. I took it down after your video uh, because it was too much to handle. Uh, I was like experimenting and I thought to myself, if I do any other desktop environment, no matter how good, it's splitting myself too thin. Yeah. Concentrate on one thing and do it good. Yeah, and, uh, You see a lot of distributions too. Like I remember when Linux Mint had more additions than they ha have now. They and just took down the KDE version. Yeah, they because it, and I, I understand why, because you're doing so much with these GTK-based desktops with Cinnamon and Mate. You, you now introduce a whole new suite of programs that you weren't using in any of the other desktops. It didn't make any sense. You, yeah, exactly. you know, have more than one GTK desktop, and or in your case, like if you wanted to do LXQ, I mean, you could still use all the KDE apps in that. That makes sense. But when you're mixing GTK and Qt, then it, it just adds a more headache. Once once I feel comfortable that the KDE is done, mm -hmm. I might add another Qt-based distro, but, yeah. uh, which brings me to, a, to, to the subject that is very important, is the KDE uh, desktop is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger than I ever thought it would be. Now it supports Wayland, which I need <laughs> to include into uh, support for in on the ISO. Mm -hmm. It took me two weeks to figure out how to set X11 as a default session, not Wayland, when, because when you include Wayland on the ISO, it's automatically the default the session. The default, yeah. I think GNOME does the same thing. Or at I, least it seems like every distribution that ships with GNOME, it defaults to Wayland. I don't yeah. know if that's a choice that the distro has made or is that's a choice that GNOME Not, makes. I don't think so. I think yeah. they just didn't, they, they added it and they didn't mm -hmm. really bother. But guess who uh, made me figure out the issue? Who? Fedora. Ah, well, that would make sense. They implemented, they <laughs> right. implemented uh, yeah. config. It mm -hmm. was very easy. It was basically adding one line to uh, sddm.com that's it one cool. line hmm. and i had to it took me two weeks to figure it out one I, I let's go a little bit 
more meta, a, a bigger question, because we, we've delved into the yeah. desktop environments, but why Arch as a base? Uh, another like, how, how did you get into that? Because, I mean, we kind of skipped ahead there. Very simple. Mm -hmm. I tried Mint like everybody else did. Okay. It was the Debian base. The very next distro I tried after that was Manjaro. And since I fell in love with KDE on Manjaro, KDE. Okay. I tried to add KDE to Mint. <laughs> but by that time, already KDE was already removed by, by Mint. Yeah. And of course, the KDE you're adding, especially on the Debian edition of Mint, would just be straight from the Debian repos, which is not a great experience. I, I go as far as saying straight from hell. Yeah. And the defaults, I, I, many people don't know this because most people don't install a distro like Arch or Gentoo or some, you know, where you get vanilla KDE, but the default settings are horrible. Yes. <laughs> I agree on that. So, and, and I did, I dig, mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of digging on Manjaro. I, I didn't know that Manjaro was Arch like distro. It's not an Arch based distro because mm -hmm. that's a big misconception by users. It's not an Arch-based distro because it is not. It doesn't use the Arch repositories. They use their own. Right. So it's an Arch-like distro. Don't make the, don't make the mistake. But uh, I didn't know it was Arch-like. So I had to do a lot of digging to know what is it based on? Why is it so awesome? <laughs> And then, and Ubuntu does the same thing. Uh, I don't know if Ubuntu even mentions Debian anywhere on their website. And to be fair, Ubuntu maintains their own repositories as well. But still, for transparency, I think you should be upfront about things. You yeah, know, right? that's what I wanted to, uh, to bring up later yeah. on. Uh, but once I discovered that it was an Arch-like using uh, their own repositories, I was like, hmm, Arch, what is that? I go to the Arch wiki. I suffocate. Mm -hmm. It's too big. The Arch Wiki was too big, too overwhelming. And I tried to join the community and ask questions. Everybody knows this. So I'm not saying anything new. The Arch community is the most toxic out there. This, everybody knows. There, there's a few other bad ones. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Arch has... Uh, I'm not saying Arch isn't, but I'm just saying there's, there's a few other bad ones. <laughs> I don't know. It has bad seeds on their forums, but I don't think they maintain their forums. They just created them and left. Uh, yeah, what, what we, we should get into this, too, is because I was actually going to ask you, which we already talked a little bit about your website, that you've got someone working on that. As a distro maintainer, do you find it hard to both develop a distribution and then maintain that web presence? Because it seems like most distribution, almost every Linux distribution I know of, they don't care about their their websites at all. They don't care about any web presence. Uh, they, they just all let it go because the devs just want to be a dev. They just want to code. Okay, this is a very very good comment because I am the kind of person if like uh, on my on my uh, social media, if I get a request, if I don't answer it immediately because I put myself in the shoes of the guy who's requesting or the person who's requesting uh, help. No. They're not going to wait. They expect help immediately. I expect help immediately. Like when I go to a support website, I expect help. I don't like forums because forums you have to post and mm -hmm. wait. And then wait. Yeah. See who answers. I cannot do that. The forums, which brings me to my forums. My forums, forums are good, not necessarily for the person asking. The forums are good for the next guy because now it is cached in search results. And the next person searching for it can find the answer if you search <laughs> well yeah that, nobody searches for anything anymore right <laughs> but my forums uh, my forums are not for people to post not mainly for people to post issues mm -hmm. it's mainly for me to post well it's mainly for me to be eric from arco linux it, eric does videos mm -hmm. i create posts i no. like written posts. No. I and i was actually going to mention when i talked about distro maintainers having a hard time juggling, uh, like maintaining a web presence. Eric does something interesting because I, I'll say the Arco Linux websites are a bit of a mess organization wise, Yes, true. but he's not really focused on that. He is putting all of that video content on YouTube. And in many ways, I think 
That's a good idea. I might like that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, it's a great idea because it's visual. You see the right. messages. Mm -hmm. You see the. Uh, uh, you see how things are done instead of mm -hmm. capturing, uh, having a multitude of screenshots on a post oh. uh, and having a seven page document. It's right there in front of you in, on a video. <laughs> because when you tell people to go read a wiki or read a man page, I'm not reading, but they'll go watch a video. I've yeah. got no problem with that. <laughs> uh, but when you ask the question, if I like to maintain a web presence, I can juggle those two because I yeah. love being available online. Mm. Like on my forums, whenever uh, somebody uh, figures out uh, the, the solution to an issue in Zero Linux, mm -hmm. I dig for the solution on Eric's YouTube channel and I convert it to text. Yeah. And, pers and personalize it uh, mm -hmm. to Zero Linux while writing the text. I love writing on, I used to have a, a multiple blogs. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if I don't post on a daily basis, something was missing in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I do maintain an online presence and especially on social. Another thing that makes Zero Linux very interesting, according to my users, is they get a re an, in an instant reply. They never have to wait. They rarely have to wait, mm -hmm. rarely. Only when during Easter, like for example, I'm not going to be available. <laughs> Uh, holidays people understand that though and i have or they easter. should anyway <laughs> and i have two easters to juggle i have the catholic easter and my easter so <laughs> well so you've got a family of different traditions so now yeah. you've got to celebrate easter one week and then the next yeah like i'm orthodox greek well i orthodox, guess that's nice so, yeah, yeah i'm greek orthodox so i have to celebrate mine next week and this <laughs> week is my dad so <laughs> But you gotta take you gotta take two weekends off, huh? Just to take it. Yeah, I won't be going to the store for uh, for a week. Yeah, so you get two Good Fridays and yeah. two Easter Sundays. Yeah. Uh, now, is, yeah. One thing I I wanted to briefly ask you because I, I'm sure I can imagine some of the answers to this question. But when you got into developing your own distribution, surely there were some things that surprised you as far as the difficulty along yes. the way. Yes. What were some of the things that surprised you <laughs> like when you started well, working on this? Wow, this is harder or more work than I had imagined. OK, bash scripts. Now, I was going to ask you about because I was going to ask you what language uh, you do everything and you, you do bash scripts mostly. Yes. OK. Uh, I just Google how to do uh, one thing uh, like, I, for example, boss audio and pipe wire. Since I have the audio switcher, it's a bash script. I that, think everybody does the Stack Overflow thing, where you just yes. find <laughs> Stack Overflow is a lifesaver. Uh huh. You must admit, it's a lifesaver. Oh, I use uh, it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured out how to do this. Like today, I figured out how to edit instead of. Here's an example. Uh, the way I began doing things, for example, mm -hmm. to add a line to a file. Mm -hmm. Before. I used to delete the file and to do wget the new file instead of it. Uh. I was like, and as I started learning more, I started using the sed command. And today, only today, I learned how I can use the sed command to replace a specific line in the in the file. Yeah, you can actually, and not many people know this. Sed is really interesting because you can actually specify a range of lines to replace. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just a single line. You can go tell it, find this paragraph or this and block of and replace the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, and if you look at the, uh, if you get uh, some time and look at all the scripts I have, mm -hmm. I abuse the, the set command. I abuse it. Everyone has their, their favorite little things. I, I'm like that. If you ever look at any of my scripting, I love awk. I, I, I use awk for everything. And people are constantly, t why are you using awk with it? You could have just used something much simpler to do this task. It's like, it's just what I learned. Yeah. You know, once you get comfortable with it. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable with using the set command. I use it right. a lot, especially, mm -hmm. especially for grub, for example, if you want to, uh, yeah. because grub by default is set to a resolution of 640 by 480 for, I don't know why they like to. Uh, to Legacy talk. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. It's very painful. It is. Uh, uh, so I had to said in j during the install of the bootloader uh, in Calamares, I tell it to said replace 
the 640 by 480 by 1920 by 1080. I, I think most most distributions these well not most a lot of distributions though usually change that uh that resolution especially yeah. the console resolution because that 640 resolution that's that's way too small because yeah. most people these days are, are using 1080p monitors at least or if not 4k monitors well <laughs> a lot of my users are using uh potato laptops for some reason why do i uh, attract potato laptop owners to, to do well that? I there is, i can tell you why it's the linux aspect there is a certain quality to linux that lends itself there's a lot of people that imagine Linux is that operating system you put on ancient hardware that yeah. nothing else will run on. And that's true. But, but not with KDE. Come uh, on, you gotta admit <laughs> maybe not with Plasma. <laughs> plasma, it is fast and quick. As long as you have 8 gigs and above and you yeah. got a, a decent iGPU. But if you have a potato laptop from like 25 years ago, uh, yeah. no, please don't. 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 <laughs> and I have to learn how to say no to people. Yeah. I'm the kind of person who do doesn't like to say no to people. I'm very open and I like to, to say, yes, you can do this. Uh, but uh, I learned quickly while maintaining Zero Linux that you got to set expectations. You can. Uh, you'd, mentioned, you'd mentioned earlier that you uh, started with Linux Mint as a first distribution. How long ago was that? Um, you know how many years You're ago that was? You're not going to believe this. Hmm. You're not going to believe this. Oh, I probably will. 18 months ago. 18 months? Yeah. I, I, that's not too shocking. <laughs> I've been using Linux yeah. as a whole 18 months. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I've seen the same thing from people that have used Linux for a year or two, and you'd think they were pros. Like, they, they know everything about, you know. Yeah, the, by releasing my own distro, I kind of inadvertently <laughs> gave that impression that I know everything. Uh, but let me set the record straight uh, with you, and mm -hmm. so your viewers can can understand. I do not know how to code. Every single line of code is copy pasted and modified to suit zero Linux. It wasn't written from scratch. I here here's a tidbit about my about me. I don't know how to cre uh, create anything from scratch. I've never in my whole life created anything from scratch. I've used other people's work, modified other people's work, and made it mine. Yeah, but, but that's where everybody gets started. Yeah. Everybody gets started by taking something that's already been created and then usually trying to recreate it themselves. Well, like nobody, yeah. very few people have an original idea when they're you know, the first idea, learning. The idea is not not being original. It's like, for example, if I wanted to uh, replace one thing with another, I learn how to do it using other people as work as a draft. And then I re uh, remold it to shape uh, to to fit zero Linux, mm -hmm. but I I never created anything like uh, dissertations like when in school when I used to back in the eighties when uh, they asked us to create dissertations. I used you to, did everything in Word Perfect back then. <laughs> was it Word Perfect? <laughs> Uh, I can't no, remember. Word Perfect was around. <laughs> Lotus one two three on my dad's Lotus. MacBook. Yeah, I remember Lotus. Yeah, on my dad's MacBook Two Vi, mm -hmm. which was discontinued after nine months of being created. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I, for dissertations, I used to read books, take sentences from the books, and shape mm -hmm. it into a dissertation. Yeah, never write a single sentence from my head. This is how un incre or non creative I am. I just use, I don't, I cannot, it's, it's a weakness I have, but I turned it into a, uh, strong, strong suit. Well, if you've been using Linux for 18 months, let me ask you another question, because as a somewhat new to Linux user, and there's many of them that are going to watch this, this interview, how has your view of Linux changed from when you first made the switch to now that you've used it for a little while? Because I'm, I'm sure it's a big change now than when you when you started. It might shock some people. Hmm. I still don't believe in using Linux as your only operating system. Okay. Uh, so you uh, still uh, dual boot? Yeah. Or yeah, okay. Uh, you I dual boot a Windows or Mac? No, I have a MacBook. I don't need them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, okay. I, I, my MacBook is uh, so recent. Uh, it's a 2017. It doesn't with a touch bar, so it doesn't mm -hmm. support Linux. But 
uh, I do boot with Windows 11 for only mm -hmm. one reason. Like I mentioned earlier, it's only for gaming. Okay. I only boot into Windows once every three months. Once, once every, every three months. months before the update? For, for updating uh, yeah. everything, uh, because we, unfortunately, I'm from Lebanon, so our internet is capped. So uh, I don't know, out of the blue, they decided to give us some days unlimited dur during the entire day. Okay. So I wait till Sunday, one Sunday a uh, every three months. The updates accumulate for games, as you can imagine. Uh, I update all my games and uh, play uh, Diablo for an hour or two, and then we move <laughs> back to Linux. Because yeah. to be frank, ever st since I started using Linux, I cannot see myself using win Windows on a daily uh, for general tasks. Because it's got a blue screen on me, it's gonna uh, re decide to reboot and install updates on me. Uh, you know, I, I've heard from so many people that were worried about the same things when they when they switched to Linux from Windows. Like, well, I've got a dual boot because I'm gonna miss some things, and then they start using Linux, and they realize after two, three, four months. I've never logged back into my Windows this whole time. <laughs> like, I didn't need to dual boot at all. Right? So. Uh, well, that is true for me, because I only boot to update and to, to yeah. play Diablo. Yeah. Diablo is the Diablo and Doom are the only two games I play, I've play. i ever played in my life, and I still, I've been playing those two games for the past 20-plus years. I'm not a varied uh, player. I don't play online games. i just single player, and I cheat. Of course. Uh, Everybody, I mean, that's the point of single player games. You can do what, whatever you want. Yeah. Exactly. It's the aspect yeah. of Linux a little bit uh, uh -huh. in, in games. Online, but, it's a little harder to cheat, especially nowadays because of all the anti-cheat. Yeah. Uh, detection. And I, have an account, I have an account on Cheat Happens, a lifetime account on Cheat Happens that gives me tra access to trainers. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I play this uh, games for story. For the story i don't play it to lose or uh no. to, to, to gain experience or anything it's just for the story i like to watch the story as a movie since i come from an artistic background i like to watch uh, the story as it unfolds uh, while i'm playing mm. uh i just started god of war just to, because out of curiosity mm. and now it won't launch so no that's unfortunate <laughs> so i went back to diablo <laughs> yeah but unfortunately uh, you know and that, that's another thing people sometimes talk about uh the limitations of uh, steam and proton is you buy these windows games on linux for proton and sometimes they don't launch but then y you know how steam works on windows you'll sometimes buy games on windows on Steam, they won't launch. Like it's the same yeah. thing. It's, it's like the same thing. you've got the same problems no matter which OS you. Exactly, uh, and and on Linux, what I love now on Linux is that Steam, just okay. It some games need updating, mm -hmm. but a lot of games like Doom Eternal, for example, just runs, yeah. just works, uh, and it works better than on Windows. Because Windows uses half your RAM without doing anything. <laughs> well, well, that's yeah, that's the overhead of just launching into their particular desktop environment. Yeah, with you no know, plasma. Those. Plasma you know, people like to criticize it as being heavy or bloated, no. but typically when you launch a, a pl plasma desktop, five hundred megs maybe of RAM. I mean, it's nothing compared to Windows. I mean, way less than Windows. <laughs> yeah, the Windows on on cool boot on, mm -hmm. on a cold boot, it uses three gigs. Right. That's because of all the uh, Service. telemetry and stuff in the and background. That's yes. good, right? <laughs> so uh, on Linux, my uh, just add LatteDoc to Plasma. Mm -hmm. You will cross it 1.2 gigs just yeah. by adding LatteDoc. And I cannot live without LatteDoc. And people criticize Zero Linux for looking like Mac. I didn't do it because... Well, I, I don't know if Mac. that's a critique. No, but... Well, that, because many people like like Mac as far as the workflow. Yeah. So I don't think that's a necessarily a negative. Well, I, I cannot live without the dock. I, I got used to it so much that I cannot live without it. I have 32 gigs of RAM, so it doesn't hit me that much. Mm. Uh, but anyway, uh, Linux, I use on a daily basis. I cannot live without Linux anymore. After 18 months, even after zero Linux, this is a hobby distro. So which brings me to a point where uh, I need to say, if it disappears one day off the internet, don't be surprised. 
this is a hobby and yeah. we and i'm a 42 year old person i cannot keep doing this forever i don't i'm not making money out of it i'm it's not paying my rent it's it's just a hobby i need to i i need to to learn more and more about the nitty-gritty of linux and this is allowing me to do that it, it's an educational process right that's yeah, many exactly. people don't understand this and I, i've told people this about me doing my youtube channel the reason I'm, i started this and doing these linux videos is not necessarily to teach people although that's nice it was to teach myself because when i have to explain stuff to other people it teaches me <laughs> I become it becomes more ingrained and yeah. you'd be surprised the best way to learn anything is to have to teach others yes and it doesn't matter what that is just teach somebody else something and you will learn it much faster right here uh, I'm using my store as an excuse mm -hmm. to introduce Linux to people yeah like now, I tell them Linux and the other day the lady the, the lady the lady's reply was so funny I burst out laughing I mm -hmm. told her uh, she brought me her laptop. Uh, she asked me to install any operating system as long as it worked. I was going. I explained to her, "I'll install Linux for you. It's very simple." And I wasn't going to install an immutable file system uh, like Fedora, uh, Servo Group. I told her Linux. You know what her reply was? No, no, That's no, okay. no, 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 no. I don't <laughs> want virus. I don't want virus on my laptop. I don't want virus on my laptop. <laughs> virus? I was like, virus. Oh, what is it's not a it's not a virus. <laughs> I told her it's, I I installed uh, Fedora Server Brew on on her laptop and now she's the happiest she's ever been. She, and her laptop is from ninety eight, yeah. <laughs> from nineteen ninety eight. I can believe that. I installed Fedora uh, Fedora Server Brew. It's not the perfect performance because it uses known desktop. Mm -hmm. Well, at at least she's got a gig of RAM, a single gig. Yeah, one gig is fine for Linux desktop use. The only problem one gig is going to run into is as soon as you open up a web browser, you will not the web, over. Brow web browser I, I added. You were is trying it, to go old school? Yeah, kind of, because oh. of the uh, nature of the laptop. Mm -hmm. But it was a, an old, cute, uh, I don't know if it's cute based, because cute came after 98, right? Uh, KDE yeah. came after 98. Uh, it looked like uh, Conqueror, but a much simpler. It could version. have been the Cute Toolkit. Actually, I, I think it was around before GTK, but so, you didn't see it on Linux because Cute was actually proprietary software yeah. back then. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I installed uh, something that looks like Conqueror. I forgot the name of it. It was a weird name, but it was very simple. No extensions, no nothing, but at least it supported the new protocol, HTTPS protocol. Uh, so, <laughs> the new the, the new protocol https <laughs> yeah <laughs> because there was an https pre previously but it, it now mm -hmm. uses a much modern version of that yeah. and it supports it and it looks a little bit like conquer but as long as it works and i installed one application for chat for chatting for her mm -hmm. it's called ferdy i don't know if i've you heard know of it. it yeah i've heard of that yeah all her chat uh, clients are open in this web app. Instead of having multiple clients eating up your RAM, I had yeah. to I had to balance. Okay, it has only one gig of RAM, so just by loading the desktop, it's using three hundred megs of RAM. I mean, it almost at that point really needs to become almost like everything in the browser. Just set it up like a kiosk where it launches your browser, and that's what you get. <laughs> yeah, I just added three, uh, four icons in uh, on her panel at the bottom. Yeah. I, I dropped her panel at the bottom because she's used to uh, Windows. Mm -hmm. So not for it to be too different uh, from what she's used to. I dropped the, the known panel down to the bottom, added the start menu. Uh, I forgot the name of it. And I added four icons. I added the, br the browser icon, the, uh, the web app uh, icon. Oh, uh, a media player, MPV for yeah. uh, watching videos. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 the fourth thing I forget what the fourth thing was, and that was it. And that's what she uses on a daily basis. She uses WhatsApp uh, and <laughs> Telegram and Twitter inside Ferdy. Yeah, they they all have uh, web clients, so you don't need. Yeah, uh, they they use uh, on Ferdy. She opens the browser, and the browser when you open the browser, it only uses twenty megabytes of uh, of RAM. Wow. So that's a bit. Uh, oh, and and the browser doesn't support tabs. Yeah. 
I remember I remember the early days of the web and yeah. those yeah because tabs weren't really a thing until I think Firefox yeah until Firefox came around in 2000 and two Three? 2003 yeah yeah it'd be a few more years yeah yeah but she was very happy and that's just to tell everyone that even if you uh, I didn't tell her what was Linux mm -hmm. I, I just gave her a laptop that works she didn't care what was on it if 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 you can do that do it it's sneaky somewhat oh i do it all the time just right. install I, I, it and don't tell them what you install yeah they you don't have to it. tell them they're just going to use their computer and they, you'll never hear from them again unless something breaks but it never breaks and it's and she because they don't they don't do anything to make their computer break normal people because they're not going to update anything they're not going to do anything weird if it's working when you give it to them it's going to still and be don't working. Forget, it's Fedora Silver Blue, a beautiful yeah. file system. She right. cannot break it even if you want. Yeah, to. because you just roll back. If, I mean, if something major happened, you could just roll it back to the last yeah. state where it was working. Yeah, yeah just one command. So yeah. uh, I am privy to, I am lucky enough to have a store to use to introduce people to Linux. Yeah. And uh, to, to, to sum everything up, zero Linux is kind of a button. It's to introduce people to, to Linux yeah. while looking good. Because uh, more and more people like visual stuff. They don't. If you give them something that looks bad, they're gonna hate it immediately. But if you give them something that looks good, they're gonna be intrigued and more interested. Yeah, I would so, agree with that. So this is this is the main purpose of Zero Linux. You yeah. can you can uh, build it to whatever you want. That's the beauty of Linux. You don't have to rely on the maintainer to create it for you. I just give you a good base to work on yeah. it looks good it's well optimized now do your thing learn and build and a lot of people do that but there are some people they want spoon feeding and hand holding and yeah well you, you got both sides of the coin basically you're always going to have that uh one thing we should talk about before we wrap up where do you see the future of zero linux like short term long term you got some goals that, that maybe yes. you want to share yes like i was saying earlier i'm uh, in the uh, the future of zero linux is still unknown but the point of zero linux is to get more people on board of linux uh the future I, nobody can tell the future it could disappear, of course it could disappear in uh, in a month's time it could disappear yeah. in 10 years time i mean neither one of us could even be here tomorrow i mean that's out of our hands right yeah, <laughs> yeah. our off switch is with the right. lord so mm -hmm. zero linux's off switch is in my hands but there is a bus is. factor with zero linux then it would if something happened to you god forbid yeah. would that be the end of zero linux at least no. has no okay no I am currently, uh, with, with every distro, I think it happens, with everything it mm -hmm. happens, I'm uh, always interested in people who want to continue the, the project. Um, I don't want to kill Zero Linux. I, it, it, it is too good and too much work, sweat and tears went into, uh, into Zero Linux because yeah. I can promise you, as a distro maintainer, don't think it's easy. Yeah. It's not an easy job or thing. Uh, you're going to get a lot of haters you have to deal with. You have to learn how to deal with the haters. You're going to get the people, as you put it in your video, who are very, um, sh how shall we put it? Uh, well, how did you put it in your video? Well, I, I, one of the things I will say is when you do anything publicly, you have to interact with people yeah. that maybe normally you wouldn't. You see, it's almost like a study in psychology because you really see there are so many different types of people out there. Many of them are not yet complete. Like they haven't really formed a proper personality just yet yeah. um, because they, they don't interact well with others. And unfortunately, you have to be able to overcome that. Yeah, that's what I'm learning currently. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to overcome that. And step step out of myself and put myself in the that user's shoes mm -hmm. that's the beauty of zero linux is that it's teaching me how to interact with people as much as it's helping people learn about linux no. uh, uh, because a after you're done with zero linux 
you know, no matter what you do going forward in life, it will, you will learn so much about people yes. just from, from doing this. You really will. I, I've seen both sides of the coin so mm -hmm. far. I've seen the negative side and the helpful side. Mm -hmm. And I am lucky enough now to have uh, over five people that are helping the project. Mm -hmm. I learned recently about XFS, mm -hmm. the file system. Yep. It's, it's one of the best I've ever used. I, I, I tested it on one of my spare SSDs. Yep. It's great as a file system, but I very stable. Have... It's used a lot in servers, XFS, still yeah. to this day. Yep. That's why it's the default uh, starting the May release. Uh, yep. I wouldn't have known that if uh, my friend didn't tell me about it. Yep. So I'm learning through others. And how am I? Uh, there's another way you, you learn, and that's the best part of uh, creating a Linux distro. Once you put it out there, people are going to get issues. And how do you make a distro better is by fixing those issues or finding solutions for those issues and those solutions working. Mm. Oh, I learned that I can do this and this and that with, uh, with Linux. I didn't know that. This is how we learn. The users are shaping the distro, not me. They come up with ideas. It's, it's a community-based thing. That's what I love about it. And so far, I haven't had a lot of negativity. The only negativity I had is when I tried to remove Wayland. <laughs> when I tried to do that, a lot of people were like, oh, it's like stripping uh, people from oxygen. I'm like, what? Yeah, not really. Not really. Not it's, really. A broken, it's a broken system. I shouldn't have included it in the first place. But. Right. It's one of those things. Yeah. Once it's there, then you try to remove something. People will complain. Yeah. But like, you just don't offer them anything to begin with. Then they, it had never been a problem, right? So. And from here on in, to, to, to say one last thing, from here on in, Zero Linux will only be KDE. Uh, I will not add any more dis uh, desktop environments or window managers unless the team grows and a maintainer can. Right. You would need somebody to, to maintain... act as the maintainer of that edition because you yeah. can't do it. Right. No, uh, I can't. I barely have time to maintain one edition. Right. And I know KDE so well now that I feel so comfortable playing around with it. I juggle with it. It's like I can do whatever you want with my eyes closed. Uh, and KDE does have its drawbacks. Mm -hmm. I, I understand them, but I am different than others. I accept them because I know in, in time they will be fixed and they will be addressed. And I'm a very patient. I learned patience by creating Zero Linux. No, I never had no patience choice. before. So now I'm very patient. Like it used to take. Do you, have you ever suffered the issue where with any distro? But you're using Arco, so you might have seen it. Uh, when you re, uh, try to reboot your system or shut it down, it sometimes takes a while. Now uh, the system D uh, stop jobs that take yeah. like 90 seconds. Yeah. And sometimes you don't want to wait the 90 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I, you should do is. If, if you're running the shutdown command, always do shutdown now to yeah. tell it, hey, just I don't care, force quit. Don't run those stop jobs. Not uh -huh. in the correct order. Instead of doing that, I found a fix. Mm -hmm. Now it does that on uh, all the time. You edit the, using the set command again. <laughs> of course. You edit the system.conf in etc system D. No. Well, that yeah. would make sense, yeah. I added that file during the installation in Calamares. I added that command to the uh, to the final oh. shell process. Uh, it added, it sends those lines. It turns 90 seconds into 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It turns uh, a one minute. There's one job set to one minute. Uh, five minutes, sorry. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I tell it one minute. I, I, I shorten everything. No. So now uh, you should. I, I've out. never been that annoyed with it, but I, I can understand some people reboot their computer because they did an update and they, they're trying to get right back into it and they don't want to wait a minute and a half. No. But it's, it's a minute and a half. Come on. But people, a lot of people use that as an excuse to hate System D. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I found a fix. Now yeah. everybody's happy. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, any any final thoughts before we go? Uh, anything else uh, you wanted to to mention that we didn't get to? Yeah, like I mentioned one uh, on one of your live stream, previous live streams, if you want to use Arch, please understand what you're getting yourself into. Arch is a very big rabbit hole. Mm. You should learn to do your own research. Don't expect people to handhold 
uh, to handhold with you and uh, give you all the answers. You have to, and uh, using Linux as a whole. Yeah, that's just life in general, to be honest. It's a discovery. It's a yeah. discovery. You learn. You the beauty of Linux, you can shape Linux into your dream OS. Can you do that with Windows? And you, you don't want to be dependent on anyone for anything at the end of the day. If you're dependent on somebody else, then you are very, very vulnerable at yes. the end of the day. If you depend on someone to solve you all your issues yeah. and you're not ready to do your own research, mm -hmm. specifically when it's related to your own hardware that no one owns. No. So well please, said. please get, understand what you're getting yourself into when you go to Linux. Not to, not to be negative about Linux. Linux is amazing. You can shape it and mold it into whatever you want. Can you do that with Windows? No, you can't. No. <laughs> Not said. Yeah. Well, uh, would you like to disclose any kind of contact information if people wanted to get a hold of you or even just yeah. uh, information about learning more about Zero Linux? Yeah, you can visit my current website at zerolinux.xyz, which will become the website that... Uh, yeah, that's the website I showed earlier. Yeah, that Derek showed you earlier. Uh, I'll show again here. And uh, you can find me on Twitter. Now you've yeah. got social links on yeah. the website to to Discord, uh, Patreon, YouTube, GitHub. Except you got all your information. I forgot to add Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Tech Zero, T E C H X E R O. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, and I also have Patreon. If you want to help the project continue, uh, it'll be yeah nice. To, to, so if know. people do want to contribute, whether it be through financial con contributions or helping the project out with code or documentation or anything you like can visit that. Visit the forums or okay. uh, Discord or Telegram. Those are the uh, I'm mostly active on Discord and Telegram. And you can find my forums via my website. If All you right. want to learn, I post a lot of uh, uh, neat tools. And it, the forum is not a place to ask for support. Let me be clear about that. It was never meant to uh, to provide support. It was just uh, the, it's just there to for me to give uh, to post uh, guides, tutorials, and uh, to help you discover new tools, new scripts, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. If you want support, hit me up on Telegram and Discord. You will get instant help. That's a promise. That's a guarantee. I will answer you no matter what time it is at, at night. I'm up until <laughs> five a.m. So if uh, I don't answer you, I feel bad. So uh, you will you will have primo uh, support, tech support. Very nice. <laughs> well, thank you for hanging out with me and chatting with me today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to do this little interview. And I want to wish you the best of luck going forward and best of luck to Zero Linux going forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope uh, also district, uh, I mean, uh, DTOS. <laughs> becomes a distro <laughs> if it will ever become one. i don't know i've got so many weird plans with it you know it's like the roadmap thing i got to figure out exactly which directions i want to go with various things so. i'll just i'll just uh, tell you that i dug through your code mm -hmm. although i don't understand a lot of code as i said earlier but it's interesting yeah. there there are some interesting decisions you've made and uh, you were right last time that i didn't install emacs the right way that that's why it was taking 30 seconds instead of the time it should take <laughs> so i'm learning to emacs slowly <laughs> because i'm a nano guy ah. <laughs> So I, I like the name of the channel. <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't even know that you used Nano when I created the uh, Jitsi channel here. We're meeting on Jitsi, and I uh, emailed him, and I told him, meet in the room called, I can't use Nano, because <laughs> that's for me. I can't. I If you've ever seen me try to use a Nano on video, I literally can't use it. I can't remember the, the key bindings. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, it's not about not using, uh, not liking anything. It's like I rarely do edit in terminal. I use Kwrite, like, like a human being. I use Kwrite. I edit, save, it supports yeah. sudo. I'm done. Yeah, Why right. do you use complicate your life? If you like something <laughs> simple on Linux, don't be afraid that people look at you weird. Yeah. And Linux, no. And one last thing, I want to say this because a lot of people, because I'm going to share this locally here on my, in my circles in Lebanon. No, Linux is not for hackers. Linux is a normal desktop. Uh, it's a normal operating system. It's not made yeah. for hackers. 
And <laughs> we're just normal like guys. And we just if we keep repeating it enough, maybe people will believe we're just normal people. I don't just know like why everyone. they think Linux is for hackers. Maybe because <laughs> of uh, what's it called, the, the distro for hackers. Cali. Cali Linux. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with me, Dark Zero, and uh, peace. Peace out. Happy Easter. Same to you. All right. Take care, brother. Take care.